Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. Kazuo has pulled in the entire meta around his existence, but how exactly did he do this? Today, we will be gliding through so many traits about our favorite ronin samurai, Kaedehara Kazuha. Kazuha was released over 6 months ago on June 29th, 2021, and initially it was difficult to predict the insane impact that Kazuha would have on the Genshin Impact metagame. However, his banner flew by and then the community quickly realized that Kazuha is absolutely insane. To understand this lofty claim, we'll be analyzing why Kazuha has blown away the competition. Let's start with an elemental mastery focused free to play support build, which consists of the 4 piece Viridescent Veneer and a Refinement 1 Iron Sting. For the artifact main stats, the timepiece, goblet, and circlet are all elemental mastery. And for most free to plays with this setup, it's perfectly reasonable to reach around 919 elemental mastery. Kazuha's passive, Poetics of Fubutsu, adds 0.04% elemental damage for the swirled element per point of elemental mastery he has. So in total, this completely free to play Kazuha setup provides an impressive 36.76% bonus damage from his elemental mastery, and then he also provides the standard 40% resistance shred from the Viridescent Veneer. So just how much does this free to play Kazuha boost a character's damage with these buffs? Let's take a quick look at how much he buffs my Klee with the Dodoko Tails. Klee's first hit on a normal attacks is doing 5932 damage on crit without Kazuha. Once we add a free to play Kazuha's buffs, she is now doing 9045 damage with the first hit of her normal attack. This is a whopping 52% increase from a simple Kazuha Tabi. From a damage amplification perspective, Kazuha is already doing an amazing job with this free to play setup. And one thing that sets Kazuha apart from, let's say, a Thrilling Tail Sucrose, is that he can have 100% uptime on these buffs. The Thrilling Tail suffers from having a 10 second duration with a 20 second cooldown, as well as much more restrictive rotations. Let's now take a look at this more comprehensive chart of how much my Kazuha buffs my Gan Yu's bloom damage. But before that, a nice amount of you guys aren't subscribed to my channel. You can make it a much less nice number by swirling that subscribe button for more epic Genshin Impact content. We'll use the worst case scenario for Kazuha's buff for this example, which is with my Gan Yu who has a Refinement 5 Amos Bow, as well as low elemental mastery. The free to play Kazuha variation buffs her damage by still a significant 36%. And to better understand just how powerful Kazuha is, let's compare him to other support options. A free to play Bennett that provides 856 attack and the Noblesse Oblige boosts Ganyu's Melt Bloom damage by 43%. You might look at this and think that's quite a bit higher than a free to play Kazuha's damage boost. But the thing is, Bennett and Kazuha actually cover three different multipliers. This leads to all three of these buffs multiplying with each other and thus leading to an insane 95% damage with both the free to play Bennett and free to play Kazuha. When combined with another broken character like Bennett, the two of them create insane combos that literally double your damage even with free to play setups. Let's also take a look at how much Dolphin and Whale Kazuha builds boost Ganyu's damage. The Dolphin build at Constellation 2 increases her melt damage by 74%. Since my Ganyu is a bit low on Elemental Mastery, that additional 200 Elemental Mastery helps a lot, and the 200 additional Elemental Mastery also provide more bonus damage. Anyway, after adding a Refinement 1 Freedom Sworn, now she's doing 98% more damage. And finally, the Whale build with a Constellation 2 Kazuha and Refinement 5 Freedom Sworn ends up boosting her damage by a massive 123%. And combined with a max attack buff Bennett, we can see that Ganyu is now doing three and a half times her solo melt damage, and thus she's easily able to melt away the competition. Now admittingly, we should take a look at a free to play Sucrose buffs as well, and she boosts my Ganyu's melt damage substantially more than a free to play Kazuha. However, we can see that at Constellation 2, Kazuha is buffing my Ganyu pretty much the exact same amount as Sucrose is, and that brings us to the next point. Which is the perfect segue to talk about how Kazuha is an amazing long-term investment and how he has so much room for growth for most players. Now I don't mean to keep bullying Sucrose like that Palad guy did, but she is the closest character overall to Kazuha's kit. 
Sucrose is already a top tier character, but she is maxed out once you give her Elemental Mastery main stat artifacts and the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. Kazuha, on the other hand, gains a huge boost at Constellation 2, which people can work towards over time. He then has further room to glide above and beyond the competition with the Freedom Soaring Sword, which just catapults him in conjunction with his Constellation 2 above and beyond all other anima supports for boosting damage. This room for long-term growth makes him a great character to invest into and to grow into as he gets more reruns and as you're able to get him up to Constellation 2. Now back in my Yoamiya video there were tons of comments berating her as a character saying that she is dependent on Bennett and Kazuha. Similar to Bennett's analysis, the reality is that so many characters are heavily reliant on having an anima support to buff their damage. Kazuha's ability to buff all Pyro, Electro, Cryo, and Hydro characters, or Petch characters for short, puts him in a similar situation as Bennett. And the reality is, any swirlable character that's released is released with Kazuha in consideration. Let's take a look at all the DPS characters that are reliant on a Constellation 2 Kazuha to draw out their maximum potential. That's right, that's a lot of characters. And here are all the DPS characters whose one of their best in slot supports isn't Kazuha. The only characters where he is not the best option once you hit Constellation 2 with Kazuha are Geo, Animo, and Physical DPS characters. All the other patch damage characters are pretty much reliant on Constellation 2 Kazuha to bring out their maximum potential. As we can see, Kazuha is insanely universal thanks to his ability to buff the rainbow. And while his free to play build does not always provide the biggest damage buff in comparison to Sucrose, after just a couple of constellations he becomes the uncontested best damage amplifier from the animo side, and if you manage to get the freedom sword sword, he becomes even further the uncontested best damage amplifier. And I wanted to quickly touch upon some additional points that make him even more powerful. On the slightly more advanced side, Kazuha drastically improves rotations and can buff all sources of patch damage, again pyro, electro, cryo, and hydro damage. For example, unlike Sucrose who has to switch back and forth from Ganyu in order to provide the Thrilling Tails buff after Swirling Cryo, Kazuha doesn't have to worry about all that. His ability to also effortlessly infuse pyro on his burst is great for many teams' success as well. His perfect synergy with Bennett make them the most broken support duo in the game for patch damage characters, and he can have 100% uptime on a large portion of his buffs. There are even more benefits to Kazuha like not needing to wait a bit to activate the Viridescent Veneer with certain compositions like Venti needs to, which is commonly a problem when Venti is paired with Raiden. Kazuha's crowd control is great for all of the other characters in the game. In particular, this includes melee characters instead of just a select few in Venti's case, whose tornado often lifts enemies out of range for a ton of characters. Kazuha's burst ticks also have no ICD, thus applying the infused element on every single tick, which can be very helpful for certain compositions like Melt. And since Kazuha buffs damage far more than Venti does, it's not as big of a problem if Kazuha cannot crowd control the enemy, as the damage buffs he provides is more than worth it to still run him in those scenarios, like for example against boss fights. And last but not least, Kazuha does a good amount of damage as well. There are countless scenarios in the overworld where it's very excessive to use Venti's burst to just kill a few Hilichurls. However, Kazuha can do just a tappy and he'll wipe out groups of monsters off the overworld with no effort at all. And I haven't even talked about his Animo damage build which is also very powerful. But wait, that's not all. Kazuha is unquestionably one of the best characters for overworld exploration as his vertical mobility is unparalleled. His stamina cost reduction for running is also the best type of stamina cost reduction, and Kazuha can mine ore as much more easily than most characters using his plunge attack. This man can literally do it all. So allow me to quickly summarize why Kazuha is broken. Kazuha is one of the best crowd control abilities in the game, literally allowing any other character in the game to actually hit the things that he crowd controls. Kazuha is one of the best patch damage amplifiers in the game, and he is amazing for free to play players. Kazuha pretty much power creeps all other animo supports for amplifying patch damage once you get Constellation 2. And fortunately, Constellation 2 is accessible with multiple reruns and quite a bit of patience. And he is amazing for dolphins and whales as well. Kazuha is the only animo character that can provide all his buffs to multiple patch elements. And he also does a ton of swirl damage as well. 
If you want, he can even be a powerful animo damage dealer, and Kazuha plus Bennett will make any attack scaling patch character insanely powerful. Every single patch character that's released is balanced around the fact that Kazuha can literally double their damage, and Kazuha is literally the best character for overworld exploration. Finally, Kazuha allows for new and better rotations, and he is always used for speedrunning and setting world record after world record. All in all, Kazuha has literally blown away all the other animo characters for overall viability, power creeping most of them, especially at Constellation 2, and only being worse than Venti in very specific scenarios where Venti's black hole is preferred. Kazuha has single-handedly bent the entire animo buffing meta around his will, and it looks like he is going to be a mainstay in any attack scaling patch team for a very long time. Let me know what you think about Kazuha Impact. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know who you'd like to see in the next series of this type of video. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.